any way helpful to live without the temple to live without being in the house of God in verse 5 the book of Haggai verse 1 chapter 1 now this therefore thus says the Lord of hosts consider your ways you have sown much and bring in little you eat but you have not enough you drink but you are not filled with drink you clothe you but there is none warm and he that earns wages earns wages to put it into a bag with holes so that says the Lord of hosts consider your ways go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified says the Lord so God is saying if you stay outside my temple not worshipping me not doing this even the things you do outside does not profit you just look at Matsabit even today I think it looks like that like they are planting those eras those days when you are young even one acre can produce a whole a whole uh, a whole lorry an acre or two today you you plant as many acres as possible what is coming out even the rain is not there since you try to live outside my word it's like you not enjoy life that is talking about so many things you drink you don't get enough you cloth there's no warmth you earn wages you're getting salary but you put it in a bag with holes so in other words living without God is not profitable to you until this the two the two prophets moved them and that is how in chapter number five we see then they spoke to the they began building when they began building the same people who came against them asked them why are you building and the king has stopped this thing so they said we are going to build you see before when they were told that they stopped because the king was against now this is a new king that came in the bible calls him king Darius. Uh, when this one came in a new king when he looked at what cyrus said since cyrus asked us to build look at the search the thing when they searched they realized the man has allowed so the king says continue now that is after Haggai and Zechariah pushing them they built they finished now let's begin from there so the temple is now fully done until chapter 6 you see that is what he says so in chapter number 7 now Ezra comes in chapter number 7 now Ezra comes in and as he comes in he he now organizes the church or the temple the Bible says in verse 7 this Ezra went up from Babylon and he was already a scribe in the law of Moses which the Lord God of Israel had given and the king granted him all his request according to the hand of the Lord is of the Lord his God upon him hmm? he is already scribe they say a scribe is a lawyer in our time today that's how we call them a lawyer those ones who write things although when you talk about a law we are talking about somebody who is expert in writings the law of God now they say that this guy knows overhead word for word from the book of Genesis to Deuteronomy you take copy hmm? from verse 1 chapter number 1 Genesis I think it should be chapter number 34 of Deuteronomy everything is in the head so when he stands up to preach or to teach He's not guessing what he talks what he talks about. He's so learned, and this, in fact, it is because of him we have so many books of the Old Testament, so many books. It's because of him. The story is like First and Second Chronicles. He has been writing down. So the period they were in exile, his work was to write 
these things that you see. So the books you have today, you have because of this man. I think you must be very grateful to him. Very grateful. Listen, his work is still being seen until today. When people are in exile, his hand is is he's devoted to this to his work. Even if there was no temple where he is to lead people, at least he's putting materials together. So imagine how the church was running or the temple was running before he came in with all the information, the knowledge of how to run. Because now from chapter 7 to chapter 10 we're going to see how he organizes people. How he organizes people. It looks like just like what some of our churches are in today. The structures have been built and we don't have qualified people to do this work. Hmm? And some are just praying God. They're just praying God. God if... Hmm? Although some have also gone and studied. But there are churches where people have put up a structure and they don't have a pastor. They're like God. Or even if he's there, he does the ones are not people whose attention are on this. So this guy gave himself, the Bible says. I think that is how God gave him also favor. Because the hand of God was on him. If you've put your whole heart to serve him, God will be on your side. That means if you, put, you not put the whole heart to fully do what he expects, if your heart is not fully in what God says, then the other problem is God might not be part of what you do. And there went up some of the children of Israel and of the priests and of the Levites and the singers and the porters and the Nathanims and to Jerusalem in the seventh year of Actasis, the king. This is now another team. From the exile, they went back three times. The first that we studied from chapter 1 to chapter 6, those are the first returnees. After that, even Ezra and some of these things that you read here came back from there. You know, there are people who said, hey, now we have already built, we've already begun business here, we're enjoying our life well. How can we leave everything here and go and begin from scratch? You go and build a house afresh there. You go and build a temple afresh. Everything. So this is another team that are now coming home. Together with Ezra. And they will add much value to the, to the temple. And he came to Jerusalem in the fifth month. Which was in the seventh year of the king. For upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon and on the first day of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem according to the good hand of his God upon him in other words he's flowing by the favor of God he's not just moving he's flowing by the favor of God God has favored him this is not a man who is just living for himself is somebody who has devoted himself to God and ready to serve him by all means. Now God's hand is with him. And some point the Bible gives us how the king believed in Ezra, the same king, and in the work and that he's doing. And he had the support of the of the king to do whatever he is doing. The guy is so excellent. May God lead us to this level in Jesus' name. A level where you do everything with excellence. Where you put your whole heart somewhere. And then you move. Not half-heartedly. Mara uko hapa. Mara uko uko. Kama fisi. You want to take this route? No. No. Verse 10 says, For Ezra, he had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord, and to do it, and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. He set his heart. He says, Now, I am going to study the scriptures. And then after I study and I understand, I apply it in my life. 
And after applying in my life, I will teach it to people. That's the best way to go. So meaning, you might take time, first of all, to reorganize your life in line with what you're teaching before you move out. It takes time to get understanding. Understanding the whole law, how long does it take? All the laws that Moses have written. The five books. Understanding all of them sitting, studying, assume you are just beginning. Assume you are just beginning to read the Bible. How long does it take you? And you have your full time on it. I am going to read and finish. I think five chapters, five books are not very many. Like the 66. But then it also takes time. It takes uh, what do I call it? it? It takes passion to understand. It takes passion. It takes time. It takes wisdom. He might have gone around asking them that have are born ahead of him to explain to him some of the things. I don't assume he just understands everything. Just like when young preachers come up, at least you have to Take advantage of them that have gone ahead of you. Look at their lives. Look at the understanding of the scriptures. And it takes time. And then after that time of all being in there. Then he comes out to teach. So it becomes easy if you've been living it out. If you leave it out, it is practical. You don't just try to read from the... Book. So one of the reasons why sometimes we read the Bible and we don't understand is because we don't, when you want to preach, you want to preach things that are not there because you have not given time fully to it. When the word enters your heart, God has entered your heart. Everything about you, God is in. I mean everything about you. That's why it is not just enough to come to church and just assume you are a member. <laughs> uh, these days even the word members have been rejected by God. God is looking for disciples. Members. They normally say members come when they want and then they remain home when they want. They do what they want to do in the Bible. Whatever they don't want to do, they stop. They don't do it. Those are members. They pray when they feel like and they don't pray when they don't, don't feel like Sometimes I look at these pastors when they say our member, our member. I look at how God is looking at them. The very person you're talking of, of our member. How much have you made works on them? How much have you progressed them? How much have you nurtured them? Jesus told the Pharisees when you recruit new people in your church, says you make them qualified for hell more than you. How many times? So they are qualified to go to hell more than the Pharisees. Several times. Jesus is also very radical. Hmm? He says you make them more evil than you. If you want to read that teacher chapter number 23 of Matthew. The 23 of Matthew is purely Jesus lecturing the Pharisees. And all the things they do. So we are saying here. Uh, you know if. If God is part of. The church leader's life. The pastor's life. That naturally means. It can be part of. The member's life. Naturally. But also that one does not automatically mean that. Because if somebody. Does not follow the word of God. And is seated there. Simply because pastor is obeying God doesn't mean that God will be a part of somebody's life. It does not mean. This life of the salvation we have is personal in nature. So you allow him in. You don't allow him in. Others enjoy. I think it's, it looks a bit... Uh, does God look a bit... Uh, how do you call it? It's like he 
does he select people he want to bless and others he does not like for example in a meetings one is getting healed another one is not healed one is walking and the other one is still on on wheelchair it depends on the hearts of people how they are prepared before they came how you prepare to meet him before you come determines what happens to you when you arrive if you came seeking not just because it is a program that is happening every morning or every evening or on Sundays no if you know that i come to meet you as my god and i want to see you in all areas of my life verse 11 says now this is a copy of the letter that the king ataxis gave unto Ezra the priest the scribe even a scribe of the words of the commandments of the, the lord and of his statutes to Israel ataxis king of kings and to Ezra the priest a scribe of the law of the god of heaven perfect peace and such at, at such a time even those days they talk about peace just perfect peace i make a decree that all day of the people of israel and of his priests and levites in my realm which are minded of their own free will to go up to jerusalem go with thee for as much as thou art sent of the king and of his seven counselors to inquire concerning Judah and Jerusalem according to the law of thy God which is in thine hand and to carry the silver and gold which the king as his, and his counselors have freely offered unto the God of Israel whose habitation is in Jerusalem and all the silver and gold that thou canst find in all the province of Babylon with the free will offering of the people and of the priests offering willingly for the house of their god who is in jerusalem that thou mayest buy speedily with this money bullocks rams lambs with meat with their meat offerings and their drink offerings and offer them upon the altar of the house of your god which is in jerusalem and also ever shall thou whatever shall seem good to thee and to thy brethren to do with the rest of the silver and gold that do after the will of your god the the vessels also that are given thee for the service of the house of thy god those deliver thou before the god of jerusalem and also ever more shall be needful for the house of thy god which thou shall have occasion to bestow bestow it out of the king's treasure house and i even i ataxis the king do make a decree to all the treasures which are beyond the river that whatsoever Ezra the priest the scribe of the law of God of heaven shall require of you it is done speedily and unto all the hand and to an hundred talents of silver to an hundred measures of wheat and unto a hundred bars of wine and to an hundred bars of oil and salt without prescribing how much whatsoever is commanded by the god of heaven let it be diligently done for the house of the god of heaven for why should there be wrath against the realm of the king and his sons also we certify you that touching any of the priests and levites singers porters nethims nethims or ministers of the house of god it shall be lawful to impose toll tribute or custom upon them and thou Ezra after the wisdom of thy god that is in thine hand set magistrates and judges which may judge all the people that are beyond the river all such as know the laws of thy, thy god and teach them that know them not and whatsoever will not do the law and whosoever will not do the law of thy god and the law of the king let judgment be executed speedily upon him whether it be unto death or to banishment or to confiscation of goods or to imprisonment blessed be the god of our fathers which has put such a thing as this in the king's heart to beautify the house of the lord which is in jerusalem and has extended mercy unto me be before the king and his counselors and before all the king's mighty princes and i was strengthened as the hand of the lord my god was upon me and i gathered together out of israel chief men to go up with me 
Now, the first time when they were being sent home, they were sent home by Sarah's, and they were given the, the finances, silver and gold, to build the, the temple. Now, this is the second time they're coming home. The king is now giving them the, the exact thing they need, the monies we are talking about, so that uh, whatever is needed in the temple for sacrifice, for whatever it is, is availed. So, this is now one of the things we see. When God calls a man, there's always provision. God does not send you empty-handed. And he knows who will finance what you do. I remember when I first came here, I thought my church can help me in whatever I'm doing. Only to realize that uh, when I had begun a high school program, nobody is even aware. Even they tell me, go and look for a job. Even when I was thinking to put up this structure, I was like, can they support me? In fact, they fought me. The specific people God raises. People who when they give, they don't feel they gave. Because God has commanded. Like you see now what see Ezra? Go! The provision is there. And as I say, sometimes I have, one of the things I've learned even as I'm serving God is uh, if there's a need somewhere and I need some finances, I don't speak to people to give. I speak to God to give. Praise the Lord. Yes. He knows who he has commanded. When the last issue came and I just looked at the account, I realized it cannot sustain her and the radio program and the programs we have inside here. We just prayed. That week, within a week, somebody sent over 35K from Garissa. And that's the money that took her back. God provides and he knows who to send. So he's sending Ezra. Go. So when Ezra went, he didn't just go empty handed. He asked other people who have remained. How many of you want to join him? Go with him. And even as you're going with him, help him carry out the work that God has put on his heart. And these are all that the things that you need to go out there. Amen. Says so these are the things you need to go out there. These are the things you need. He provided and he sent the man. Go. Now this one tells us so much about how preparation of your heart. If your heart is full of the word, in other words, you have God in you. And everything you do has success. As opposed to people who do not fill their heart with the word of God. And they are struggling every now and then. One of the places to be settled in even when things are not looks like it's not moving well, is to deposit as much of the word in you. Don't forget, don't look at circumstances. Don't look at what is happening. You know, sometimes you might look around and be discouraged. It's time, when things are not working, it's time to take in the word. The word, if the word settles your heart, God will settle everything around you, including what you need. If you do not give more time to the word uh, you know sometimes we are in such a, an environment where uh, you know you want to do something but you don't have what it takes to do it you want to begin something you, want, you don't know the best thing to do is just rest just come and learn of me my burden is not heavy <laughs> by the time you finish learning everything is available <laughs> That means it was empty inside. <laughs> it was not created inside. What you don't have physically, you don't have inside. When you begin creating inside those things, they will begin manifesting physically. That is the truth. <laughs> you, look, you look outside when it is not inside. <laughs> what a life. <laughs> and you're looking for 
Huh? Believing, we are going to talk about it after this chapter, I think. Now, after this chapter, we are talking about the armors of God. Then, in the evening class, we are going to do the last chapter. Believing simply means before you ask God, you believe it is already yours. Whatever has been created in your heart and you have believed how how terrible it is is it it is is it whatever it is <laughs> huh? not believing doubting everything and praying it is miserable <laughs> it's miserable what do you want study the scriptures create it in your heart and do what pray so Ezra did everything he prepared for the work he was not in hurry people who go speedily without preparation cause accidents that are very terrible in fact if, you know this is small cars when they get accident the the manusura waha wayogari my god kitu amani pata imekatika imeenda huko mkono when you are at high speed and you're not stable hey some accidents are are, are, are done by are, are created by people who are not stable even in driving people who are very stable in driving even if some confusion comes they contain themselves and they can save the situation but who is not stable you begin to move at the speed of light when you see danger you accelerate it <laughs> you do not stop it maturity in the things of God will spare you so many pains can I repeat that maturity and God you know does not deal with immature people <laughs> God deals with mature people if you know that you have not reached at some point to get something grow yourself i was listening to Mal, this guy he says sometimes you are praying until i stop praying for a vehicle and even asking you to come he says just grow <laughs> something you just find that has arrived and then you move with it he says just grow stop about talking about i need this if you try looking for things without growing without maturing your strength is little your ability is little it only brings you something small but you want big things you're not in a position to have it if you mature you naturally cause it happen if you're not mature what happens you struggle the struggle is struggle so the best thing about life is to mature as an individual. The best thing about life. Don't rush after things. Don't rush everywhere. Just sit down and learn. And the best place to learn from is here. People who do not have a place to learn from are doomed. They are confused. And they live a confused life all their lives. Living without relevant knowledge is introducing yourself into a world of confusion confused always my god confused everything about you is confused your decisions all of them are confused everything your family is confused your business is confused you are confused carrying confusion everywhere but when you have enough knowledge you'll be so stable you don't really wonder what to do you know every time amen so that is what we see there, Ezra. Until, you know, that's why maturity is powerful. Until the king observes the man, he says, this guy is able. If he leads these people and go with them somewhere, one of the reasons why some of us were young preachers, these big people have gone ahead of us, they feel like, uh, <laughs> Because you know, when I was in this program of the school, they feel like this one is too young to handle all these things. <laughs> it's not about the age. It's about the, the time in the world. Sometimes it's true because I, I see what happens. 
with young preachers they they don't balance everything so this man first of all stayed made the word part of his system until everything he was looking for came to him he didn't go to look for him for these things yes he's a preacher he didn't go to look for what how can i get rams god i need all those things but he, it came so all you need is to bring the word into their heart and the word will bring all you need to you i think it's that simple sit under his feet eat let the things he says seek the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things don't seek money seek the kingdom money will come for you amen father we thank you for that wisdom of your word we know as long as we are under your feet all that we need comes for us even the very assignment you give to us we are going to get it provision and we do not struggle anyway and we move in your own time at your own time without any pressure any confusion and we succeed with composure as composed as we are we progress and move at the speed of light or more than the speed of light in the name of jesus thank you for speaking to us we pray for our brother did as he travels his journey is blessed in the name of jesus christ is stay at the school lord is blessed we are asking for wisdom to come upon him in jesus name as he continues in your word may his spiritual senses develop in the name of jesus above his age mates jesus gave himself to you, you, the word and his life became light for everybody may this child become a light to his generation in the mighty name of jesus christ may the wisdom that you're feeling him with lord god make him stand out in his time for his family for his land for his church for everything that is involved even in his school as he goes back may there be such a great impact that his life will carry out lord jesus we pray for much understanding upon him thank you we bless your name as we are moving out we are blessed we are going out to do things the things we are doing succeeds we honor you in jesus name we pray amen may the grace for lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the spirit is with us now and forevermore amen